Hey, 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 welcome to the Sports Reverence Podcast. My name is Dan. And my name's Drew. We're no experts, but we are the Sports Reverence. Hey, 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 welcome back to the Sports Reverence Podcast. Glad you could tune in today. We got the legend himself, Drew Martin. How you doing? Doing really well. Loving the warm weather. I'm excited for sports to get started back up. Pumped. Tell us about your golf game today. Oh, I shot the best round so far this summer. Shot a 78, 7 over. Getting getting there. My man, my man. We got the coach rocking the, the spectacles, the goggles, four eyes and all. How you doing, coach? Well, four eyes is regular eyes, so this is not a new look for me. But I got my hair did, which was nice. Actual proper cut. So that was uh, exciting. That was a highlight. Once again, no one asked how I did, but I'm doing well, boys. I'm pumped for another show. And we got lots of good sports news from around the league. Let's start with the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays are apparently going to be playing home games in either Camden Yard or PNC Park. Zero NBA players have tested positive for COVID-19 out of 346 tests since last results were announced on July 13th. Arsenal will play Chelsea in the FA Cup final. Yuck. Real Madrid has won La Liga. And also another yuck. (laughs) The NHL awards lists have been announced. Two players test positive for COVID out of 800 at NHL training camps. And now let's hear a word from our sponsors. Have you ever thought about how well your investments are performing? Have you wanted to understand how the stock market works and how you can look after your financial future, but have been unsure of where or even how to get started? Train to Invest is North America's leading investment education and training corporation with the sole purpose of providing a new way of thinking about wealth management. Through teaching, training, and coaching individuals in both the art and science of self-directed investing, Train to Invest offers a complete education and training experience to empower families to begin their journey of planning for future generations through investment education. To find out more, Look at www.traintoinvest.com and download our free ebook. Again, www.train, the number two, invest.com to find more information about our program and download our free ebook. All right, we have two episodes left before our sports gets going. And basically, what we're doing is we're counting all of the mumble fumbles all the way up until the start of the first season, which is the major leagues. And if you don't know what a mumble fumble is, a mumble fumble is basically when we either mess up our words or mispronounce a name and or give a fact that isn't 100% correct. So we've been counting them. Currently, Drew Martin and myself are tied uh, ahead of Joel, meaning that we have less than Joel. Joel, the coach, and coach is leading the way. And what is on the line uh, is basically the loser has to do a full TikTok dance routine. And if anyone knows us, that's going to be punishment not only for everyone who's going to watch it, but the person doing it. It's going to be the most embarrassing thing. And I currently, really, coach I'm loses really or if I lose Sorry, what would you say, coach? I was really hoping the soccer stuff would mess one of you guys up. If La coach Liga. Loses, <laughs> La Liga. Uh, If coach loses or if I lose, this could be the first time you see a brown man uh, uh, blush. And it's going to be amazing. (laughs) So uh, here we go. Here we go. So basically, me and and Drew, we're at four. Coach is at five. We have two episodes left. There is one right there. And uh, we are going to see who catches up. We are not going to count them during our episode. We'll tally them up for next time. Are you a car guy? Do you love working on cars? Or are you like me and know next to nothing? Either way, the Revolution 6 shop is for you. At the Revolution 6 shop, they do car maintenance and performance customization. They also have their six parts 
Next online car parts store. Currently, they're selling track one coilovers and fabrication parts. They also sell K-tuned parts for all Honda models. You will find a great price for those parts at the Six Parts online store. Find them on Instagram at Six Parts, the number six, I-X-P-A-R-T-S. Find Six Parts on Instagram. Again, find them on Instagram at the number six, I-X-P-A-R-T-S. All right, let's get into our topic of the day. We're going to be talking about the NFL quarterbacks and giving them grades. And the, today we're going to start in the AFC and uh, we're going to go team by team and give each quarterback a grade. But just for the AFC, next episode we'll do the NFC. So let's start. Let's start in the AFC East. We'll jump to the Buffalo Bills. Drew, why don't you kick us off with it? I've got Josh Allen. I gave him a grade of B plus. Um, I was in between B and B plus, but I think with the upside of his running ability uh, and the weapons that he's getting this year, I think uh, we're going to see the best of Josh Allen this year. And that's a B plus for me. Yeah, I would, uh, I'd, I'd agree with you on that one. Josh Allen, he's a big kid, can throw the ball well, good decision-making. It's just with no nobody really in Buffalo, you don't get to see those skills shine. And I, I totally agree with you. Um, this, the weapons they got coming in, another year under his belt, I think it's going to make a huge difference. We're going to see – I think we're going to see the Bills really push for AFC East champs. Yeah. Dan, well, what do you think? Yeah, I got uh, – this is tough. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm flirting around B and B plus as well. Last year, for sure, I would give him a B. I think this year he'll probably be elevated to a B plus uh, because of Stephon Diggs. And, uh, yeah, the, the addition of, of more, um, more time spent as a quarterback will, will be huge for him. But, uh, yeah, I'll give him a B plus. Let's do it. B plus. Let's jump to the Miami Dolphins. This one's funny. Right. This one's gonna be, I think for a few of these, we decided that there's going to be, you know, a bit of a competition in camp. Uh, for the starters so we got Fitz versus Tua and um, for me Fitz he's just so hot and cold you know what I mean that's that's to me that's a huge problem so I give him a C because for like let's just say over over a full season half of the eight games he'll be just dynamite crushing everybody then the next eight games he's losing losing his mind and throwing picks like nobody's business so for me, because he's so hot and cold, I'm giving him a C. Uh, Tua, I, ha- I have Tua at C+, plus, just as a rookie. Um, I feel he's going to be a better quarterback than Fitz this year, given the chance. But I don't know how much better. I think he'll be a little more consistent for sure. But So that's why I give him the edge of a C+. Plus. But I can't, again, it's a rookie. How you, you can't really predict what's going to happen. He could just come up guns a-blazing. Or he could be a huge flop for the first year, but that—that's my take. Is a fits a C, to a C plus. Yeah, I'm similar. I, as a pairing, I gave them a C plus grade. Mm. Um, I really like Fitz. I I think he's a great veteran presence for Tua coming up. Uh, I think Tua is the most talented quarterback coming out this year's draft, and I really like what Miami's building there. And I think uh, the coaching is great in Miami. Mm-hmm. And with uh, the emergence of Devontae Parker last year mm-hmm. and Mike Gusecki, uh, they're going to have weapons to throw to. Uh, I think it'll start with Fitz at least for, yeah. I'd say, the first six weeks or so. Um, I'd love to see Tua get in there. But, you know, if, if Fitz has that hot hand, there's not many better when he gets That's hot. True. Uh, to go to so I'm gonna go C plus yeah I like that I like that I I'm gonna have Fitz as a C plus um I love I love the Fitz magic when he goes and and gives his team an <laughs> opportunity to win um yes he probably makes a lot of mistakes that's what makes him a, a quarterback that moves from team to team to team but uh the ability because he beat the Patriots last year and forced them into that wild card game I'm giving him a C plus and uh, he's just he's just that guy. Tua, I'm actually I'm with you, Drew. He's he's I think he's an unbelievable talent. I'm gonna give Tua a B. 
I think that's how good he is to start. So I'm I'm putting Tua in that B category. Is Madden rating? <laughs> um, that that the Madden ratings is a whole nother topic that we we probably should cover at some point. Here's a question for before we jump to the next one. Okay. Just about, about the Dolphins. Do you think with like a full proper training camp that Tua could just steal the job from Fitz? Like I mean, COVID is one thing. Everything's gonna be kind of, you know, mashed together, rushed a little bit. I feel. But if you think given the proper time, let's just say, you know, hit a full summer of full training and everything like that, do you think Tua could just slip the job out of Fitz? I, I don't think – I think he could. But I think with uh, what we're seeing uh, with Mahomes sort of becoming the new playbook, I think we'll mm-hmm. see that become the new playbook for teams uh, to have a guy sit behind a veteran. Like Mahomes had Alex Smith for a year. Yeah. Um, Maybe not, but but uh, I guess we weren't asking the same question a couple of years ago with Mahomes because no one really saw this coming right. from Mahomes. Uh, yeah. Two is a little more highly touted than than Mahomes was, but I, I still think uh, sitting behind Fitz is the right decision, and I think that's what they'll do. You know, if if Tua didn't have any injury history, I think he probably would be starting. Um, because he's that good but his, because of his injury history I could like if I'm a GM I'm I'm sitting him for the most part of the year if not the whole year make sure he's fully healthy let him learn for one year under fits and then hand him the reins um, that's what I would do and I should actually I think that's what the Dolphins will do so that's just what I think but okay that's all right let's keep going let's keep going we got the New England Patriots another funny one Drew, why don't you start yeah. us off? Yeah, for me, I I think it's almost disrespectful to Cam Newton to suggest that Stidham has a chance of starting <laughs> over him, but they seem to want to play this narrative that Stidham yeah. has a chance. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's to light a fire under Cam. Yeah. But for me, I'm I'm thinking Cam's going to be the starter, and I've got him as a B. Uh, he's only a few years removed from an MVP season. Um, he's still, I'm sure he still has got mobility on those legs and behind a better offensive line, more time in the pocket. He's still got a cannon of an arm. Um, I think under Belichick and under the system that New England has, if he buys in, we can see possibly him get up to the B+. Plus maybe even close to the A quarterback that he was. But for now, I'm putting him as a B. Stidham, I don't even want to touch because I, I haven't seen Stidham. I don't know. No, I, I think that's fair. Um, I guess, you know, with everything in the media, there's got to be some sort of storyline. And there must be something to Stidham if Belichick wants to keep him around. Right? right. Like, I mean, they didn't just sign Cam first day of camp or when first day when things opened. So they must see something in this kid that is good. However, Cam Newton's Cam Newton, right? When he came back the last time, he was, he was throwing bombs. His shoulder is fine. It's just his foot. And uh, I think we've seen some Instagram videos of him running around and stuff. He looks, he looks fairly healthy. And I think the biggest takeaway for Cam is if he buys in. I think he totally is uh, right now, just as is, he's a B quarterback. He's a B quarterback. Um, because we haven't seen how he recovers. If he comes out the first couple of games and, just, and starts dropping some big numbers, and if the playbook is wide open and they use his mobility that way, he could easily become a B-plus A quarterback. He has the skills there. He has the weapons, hopefully-ish. He can figure that kind of stuff out. But um, I, think, I think it's just if he focuses less on – he's kind of like Russell Westbrook in that sense where, you know, dresses crazy and is outspoken, which is totally fine. But you just want to see the results on the field. You don't want that to be – you don't want your legacy to be, oh, he wears a scarf and has crazy hair, right? Uh, so I, I think I think Cam is – I'm putting him as a B with an asterisk of B plus if he gets his stuff together. Dan, you're shaking your head. No, no, I was just laughing because they both have the same alma mater. And it's so funny because Stidham got to see – the legend of Cam Newton at his college, his <laughs> murals and his, his everything great. And he's going to go again now and Cam's going to take his job 
and <laughs> it's gonna be just be looking at Cam again, again, as he's like the the guy who swoops in and and uh, uh, makes you feel jealous. Mr. Right? Steal your girl. Yes, Mr. Steal your girl. Like yeah, it gets, it makes you feel jealous. And the only thing I could see is Bill Belichick giving Stidham a game or two to start because oh because oh. think about this okay yeah you had tom brady two decades and there's going to be this drop off there's going to be an adjustment period why not have cam newton come come in after stidham and look like a hero then come in right after and be the one that's the first quarterback after tom brady so I think, what, I think Bill Belichick is going to play that narrative. And I could see Stidham actually starting a game or two and then Cam Newton coming in as Superman and stealing the show. And I'm giving Cam Newton a B plus because I'm assuming he's healthy. And when Cam Newton's healthy, he's an elite quarterback. So you're so saying a he's a B plus, but he's not going to start. No, I think also because of health reason. and giving him more time with the team. Um, okay. They're going to start Stidham a game or two. Uh, maybe even three, and then bring in Cam, and then he's going to take over, and he's going to earn his big contract probably somewhere else other than New England. Well, see, that's a whole other story But the whole big contract because there's not many teams that need quarterbacks out there. Well, uh, We can discuss that a different day, but yeah, we'll see. I think, I think he's upper echelon quarterback, giving him a B+. B+. Plus. B+. Plus. Okay. B plus. All righty. On to the next. Now to a lowly organization, the New York Jets. All right. Uh, so internal debate we had was, we, do we talk about Joe Flacco? And that was, we scrapped that. Uh, Sam Darnold, I think, uh, aside from getting mono, he had a, he had a decent year, I think. Um, I'm giving him a B. I think he's got the tools. I think he's got um, another year under his belt. Fingers crossed. You can't get mono twice, can you? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. But uh, I think we'll have I think to uh, bumble fumble check that stat if you can catch mono twice. <laughs> that's, not a, that's not a bumble bumble. Come on, get out of here. Nice try. Nice try. Um, so I, I, th I just think there's a lot of growth that occurs year after year. And I feel like he's just a kid who's going to put in the work. So he's going to elevate his game. So I got him in the B. What do you think, Drew? Yeah. Um, I really like Sam. Arnold, it's unfortunate the situation that he's in where mm -hmm. they don't seem to be keen on getting him any help. Yeah. Um, I think he's talented. Um, I, I gave him a C plus because I think there is room there where, you know, he's going to live up to his draft status, which he was arguably supposed to go number one that year when right. he got drafted. Yeah. And uh yeah, I think there's room for improvement. I think he had a decent year. He's just gotta work. He's sort of sort of reminds me of a of a Brett Favre where you know he's a gunslinger, he takes risks. <laughs> okay. Um he threw but he needs to hone in those yeah interceptions because um yeah, that's what's really hurting him. Didn't he what weren't his first two throws or his first throw in the NFL was an interception? I think, I, think, so. I think his first throw in the NFL was a pick six. I think you're right. I think it yeah. was a pick six. That would be yeah. that would be so terrible. Yeah. You know, your, your gang ready to go. Well, you know, cool. you know, the good quarterbacks are the ones who can forget, right? They forget the bad throws and can move on. So yeah. well, no, no, no. I, I, I think it move on, not forget. Because once you forget, you just keep throwing those picks left, right, and yeah. center. But C plus, <laughs> that's what I'm giving him. C plus. C plus. I like it. I like it. I think. Yeah, I think his situation makes it look worse for him. If he's in a better situation uh, and not in a dysfunctional franchise right. where they're trying to get rid of their top end players that shouldn't <laughs> be getting, like that should be their focal point and what they're building around. Uh, right. Jamal Adams. And, and um, I, I just think there's so much dysfunction there that he's not set up to succeed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, um, I think he's a good quarterback. I'm with you. I'm going to give him a C plus, And I think he can move up a whole letter grade if 
the situation works for him and his maturity happens and all that stuff, I think he can move up a full letter grade. Ooh, B plus status, nice. Oh. But no, C plus like right now. No, no, but yeah, but up to B plus. Yeah. All right, we're moving on to maybe the most exciting division in the AFC. Uh, we'll start with the Baltimore Ravens. All right, I think this is a pretty easy one. Lamar Jackson, he's an A. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. He's explosive. We don't see too many guys like this come around too often. Um, he's got all the weapons. He's got the O-line to protect him. He's got the running backs. Uh, I think last year was just the start of what we're going to see from Lamar Jackson. So, A. You can yeah. give him an A as a running back, too. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I honestly, this was, this was, this one was an easy one. It was A. Um, there are not many quarterbacks who are better than him. And uh, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see if they can pull this off again. Because, you know, when the season started last year, it was like, okay, kind of gimmicky. He runs a lot. But then win after win after win after win. You're like, when is this going to stop? So I, I'm excited to see if he, if he can really expand his throwing game. Because if he can, because he's got lots of weapons. If he can, sky's the limits for this kid. Just like, just like Mahomes and uh, Russell Wilson. Uh, and I, I think, I think we'll see a greater appreciation for his talent this year because his division is going to be up for grabs by almost all four teams. Yep. They're all very good teams. So I think we'll see him separate himself for sure. So I give him an A. I'm with you guys. I'm giving him an A as well. He definitely – what kind of has come off in this conversation is that uh, an A is, is top, top tier. But there is a tier above him that we'll get to later. That's what I just want to put that out there, that he's not a top tier guy yet. But with all what you guys have said, I think he has the opportunity throughout his career to get there. He's going to improve, I think, in, in reducing the hits he takes. Uh, he's going to be a little bit smarter with his running. He's obviously durable, but he still has to reduce the hits he takes. Um, mm -hmm. I think his pocket presence is, is still good, but it's going to get better. Um, the improved defense is going to make him look even better as well. So I think he has the opportunity to get to the next level. Um, but he is not my top tier, but he's definitely an A. And, and the whole thing about Lamar Jackson is we, like people keep saying defenses are going to figure it out, but he's just faster than everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter if you figure it out. Yeah. He can outrun any player on your team. Like defensive backs have a tough time bringing down tight ends. Like they're right. not going to bring him down either. Yeah. Like he's just a big, strong dude who can run. Yeah. Good luck. I, okay. I would, I pity those guys who have to play him in high school. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. I, no, I pity the ones that play him in the NFL. He's made a lot of people look silly. He's got yeah. a lot of broken ankles there on his highlight reel this last year. That's true. That is true. All right, we got the next team up, the Cincinnati Bengals. Cody Allum, I hope you like what we're going to say. Who's taking Ooh. the first one? I'll take this uh, one. I, I, really, I really don't care for Cody's opinion on this one, so I, I'll take the hit. I give, I give Joe a C+. Plus. I give Joe a C+. Plus. I'm not the biggest Burrow fan out there. Um, One-year wonder, I feel. I, and I hope I'm wrong, oh. but wow. the, kid, the, kid, the kid doesn't have – doesn't have a huge list of laundry achievements here. He had one amazing year, which is great. And we'll see if that translates to the NFL. That was yeah. arguably one of the greatest years Look, ever. Tim, Tim Tebow was considered one of the greatest college quarterbacks ever. Ever. Look how that worked out. He won eight in a row in a playoff game, being five foot whatever. And, and now he's playing for the Mets farm team. Oh, I guess he's not playing because they're not having, they're not having uh, <laughs> yeah. minor league baseball, right? So, I mean, one year is just a splash of the pan. I'm not sure Joe Burrow will have a great year, especially because he's not in a situation 
where he's going to sit behind somebody and learn. He's being dumped straight into the fire, and he's got to be like – he's kind of like Le- when LeBron was drafted by Cleveland, right? Hometown hero kind of vibe. Just got dumped straight into the fire. If LeBron, if LeBron flamed out, his narrative would be completely different, obviously, right? Same thing with Burrow. Like, he could, he could be, be great and do well, but I think he's most likely going to have a very tough year and not look so good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Drew, before you respond, you just related him to LeBron James. Yeah. And saying he's going to flame out. I'm saying the expectation of coming home. Yeah. Open your ears, Dan. That, that doesn't matter. You still related him to LeBron James. Because LeBron who James else has gone home to play in the rookie of the year? Co-rookie of the year with Melo. No, but the, it's not. Okay, but what I'm saying is there's expectations going to home to play. Number one overall pick going yeah. to their hometown. And I'm, and I'm not saying that Joe Burrows is going to be the best quarterback in the NFL. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like LeBron, he's got certain expectations. LeBron excelled. LeBron, I, I would say, superseded anything anybody ever thought he could do in his rookie year. Joe Burrow isn't going to go down that path. He's not going to have a great year. He's not going to have a, a, a year that transcends the Bengals into elite status. I'm saying he's going to have a hard time because of his only short track record in college. Okay, okay. I'm not 100% following you still, but okay. Uh, I'll, I'll let you right. know. I'm, I'm following Joel, and I agree with him more so. I'm giving him a C. Uh, I don't <laughs> think he's got the plus. Oh, um, my goodness. Because, yeah, I, I, I don't see it. And I think I there's going to be <laughs> too much expectation. Uh, for a guy walking into just a dysfunctional franchise um, yep. who have proven to not support their quarterbacks. Um, and yeah, so I'm seeing a C for Joe Burrow. Oh man, I think guys, I think you guys are off your rockers here. Like this is Joe Burrow. He's the prototypical size. He's got the arm. Right. Right. Like, he, you know, you know how quarterbacks are, uh, even in movies and, and TV shows, you know, they have to be good looking. They have to be popular. He's got the swagger, you know, and Joe Burrow, you know, check mark, check mark, check mark. And he's going to like, I think he's really given the Bengals an opportunity to, obviously they're not going to make the playoffs this year and probably not next year, but they're on the right track. I think with Joe Burrow. But no with I'm going to say this, I'm giving him a B as well oh. as I did Tua, okay? Oh. And uh, I have to also say, I wanted to make sure I said Burrow because I messed up his la- name like 10 times last time. And I love how none of us have tried to uh, entertain the name, the last name of Tua. So I, every one of us has avoided that. And I just wanted to note that, that we all should be ashamed of ourselves. You're saying, you're saying that Joe Burrow is better than Tua. No, I'm, I gave them both a B. Oh, I didn't. I, didn't, I thought you'd give him a C plus. I think that's wrong. No, I gave them both a B. No, I think that's wrong. I, I know that's what you said, but oh, I think okay. you're wrong. And I'm going to say you guys will be eating your words because Joe Burrow. Tua, Tua is better and in Joe, a better Joe situation. Joe Burrows? No, I never said Joe Burrows. I'm pretty sure Joel said Bo- Joe Burrows. Like, I think Joel said Joe Burrows. See, that's why I got reminded of it. I never just said it just now. I've been real careful. All right, who's okay. next? Okay, who's next? We got the Pittsburgh Steelers. Not Cleveland? Oh, skip. yeah, the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> we, might as, we might as well skip. Yeah, Cleveland's skip Cleveland. a joke, man. Let's just okay, jump so on I, with Cleveland. Let's be quick with real Cleveland. Real quick. All right, so I got Joe Burrow at C. I got Baker Mayfield at C <laughs> as well. Because <laughs> with the weapons that this guy has... He should be putting up monster numbers, yeah. And he's not, and he seems to be getting worse over time. And it's wild. It's wild. Like he came into the league as, and his number one ability was being accurate with the football, yes. yeah, precision. And he's throwing interceptions like left and right. And yeah, I don't think it's getting any better. So I'm going yeah, with a I C. Uh, you know what? Here's the problem. It's Cleveland. 
Yeah. There's nothing to do in Cleveland. So when he goes on the road, he's probably just going nuts wild out. Because I, I gave him a C as well. I think Baker Mayfield has totally underperformed. Um, I think part of that too is, is Odell isn't as great as everybody thought he would be over there. But who knows for what reasons. But you would – I don't understand. you got one of the best receivers in the game. Just give him the ball. It's not that hard. And Jarvis Landry too. Yeah. Like, like it's – it is like a Madden dream. Just, and now they have Austin Hooper as well. Like they got, they got some great guys on that team, and and I think Baker is just he. This is a real make or break year for him. I think, mm. both in terms of um, his perception around the league and his perception in the media. Like he has to come out, and I'm not saying that they have to go you know, 10 and 6, or I guess 10 and 7, or whatever it is now, to the 17 games? No, um, not yet. Is that, is that 2021? Maybe next year. All right, so that, that one for sure is on me. But I'm not saying he's got to go, like, become second in the division and just have a monster year, which he, they, he could. He easily could. But I'm just saying we have to see some sort of growth from this guy. Otherwise, on to the next. Dan? What was your grading? Sorry, sorry, coach. Uh, C. I gave him a C. C. You know, it's it's really. I know I'm with you guys on ninety percent of your points. Um, it's it's he does Baker Mayfield does get a tough rap. Like, but this is his third year going into his third year. Yeah. Correct? And um, so his first year, he took over an O and sixteen team. Last year. Uh, then uh, they went seven, eight, and one. The next year they went six and ten. Okay, so both average years. Uh, they kind of expected him to get better. And last year, everyone kind of expected him to get better. Actually, many many analysts expected the the Cleveland Browns to be the real deal. And I just want to share it one more time. Me and me and Drew called it out that the Browns were not a big deal, and they definitely weren't. But to be fair. This is going to be his third coach, so his third new offense. Yeah, and it's just been a tough situation for him. I really think uh, 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 Kevin Stefanski is a is a good coach. He's going to be um, he's going to bring some um, continuity and some composure. Uh, last year's coach, you know, he was a coordinator. Uh, he was a, uh, he was a, wasn't even, oh, I don't even know if he was a coordinator. He was a, 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 a quarterback coach or something like that. We'll have to look yeah. that up. But um, the, he's going to have a good coach this year. His roster has filled some holes this year. So I could see the Browns maybe going nine and seven, maybe eight and eight. Um, but I'm going to give Baker Mayfield a C plus. Uh, instead of a C, just because he's had a tough go. He's had a tough go. This is going to be his third coach. It's tough. It's tough to just go in um, into an O and 16 team and just revitalize the team. It takes time. So I'm going to give him a C plus, give him the benefit of the doubt. But yes, you guys are right. He needs to have a good year this year where they have a legitimate opportunity to make the playoffs, which will be tough in that division. So okay. hold on. Just one quick question. Yeah. You got Mayfield rated lower than Burrow? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. That's my projection. Okay. I'm just okay. So then lastly, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers, who Ooh. went eight and eight last year with a third and fourth string quarterback. They have Big Ben Roethlisberger back. Who's kicking it off first? Um, mine's short and sweet. Big Ben. I'm gonna roll with the B's. I got him a B. He's older. More injury prone. Um, yeah, like he consistently puts up yards. But um, I'm just not so sure he's going to be able to see – he's able to steal you more than one game a year. That's – you know, that may be totally underselling him. I get that. But I'm just – you're just seeing a decline coming through. And he's getting paid like a top-tier quarterback. If he comes back and, and blows everybody out, great. But I don't think that's going to happen. So I put him at a B. All right, Drew? Uh, yeah, I've got him at a B as well. 
I originally had him at a B plus, but I think that was more on reputation. Mm. Um, so I've adjusted that. I think for the reasons that you said, you know, older, uh, he doesn't have uh, Antonio Brown anymore, Le'Veon Bell, um, Juju. Hopefully he'll have a bounce back mm-hmm. year this year yeah. uh, with Roethlisberger. But I, uh, I think they're going to rely more on the run game this year. Uh, gonna have to, well, point, right? Yeah, I think they're going to have to. Big year for James um, Conner? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, but Roethlisberger is still solid, solid starter. But I don't think we'll see the top-tier numbers that we're used to seeing from him. So, B. I like it, boys. I like it. Um, I originally had him at a B. But I'm going to move him to a B plus because of the situation that he's in. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are good. Uh, the, the, they've filled a lot of holes. Their defense is getting better. And um, I think the, the young receivers are going to take a big step this year Oof. because of Big Ben and obviously because they have great coaching. Um, they went 8-8 eight and eight last year, which is incredible with having a third and fourth string starting as your quarterback. They still went 8-8. Eight and eight. Uh, I so I think um, uh, I think with all those factors, he's going to look like a B plus, but he'll probably be a B caliber player. So, but I'm going to give him a B plus because he's going to look like one. Boom. So let's hear a word from our sponsors before we finish out the rest of the AFC. Samara and Jane is an Australian-based accessories retailer with all of the latest fashion trends from around the world. Ladies, update your style game with gorgeous earrings, necklaces, and other jewelry for affordable prices. And guys, you can shop for that special lady in your life too. Use discount code SPORTSREV30 for 30% off your entire order. That's SPORTSREV30 for 30% off your entire order. Use discount code at checkout at samaraandjane.com. Welcome back to the Sports Reverence Podcast. We're going to finish out the AFC quarterbacks. We're jumping to the AFC South. And we're starting with the Houston Texans. Well, Deshaun Watson is, uh, is another A for me. Yeah. I think he can do it all. And he's getting better. He's a leader. Um, I think, yeah, I, I still don't think we've even seen the best of Deshaun Watson, I think he uh, has the ability to get into my A-plus category. But for now, he's an A, and I think he's going to have a good year. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely agree with you. He's an A, and I think he's one – like just like Lamar, he can jump up to A-plus category, no problem. Um, maybe not this year, but he's on that route, I would imagine. Um, injuries aside, obviously. Mm-hmm. Losing his top weapon, though, is going to be difficult. Um, Houston team's in, in a bit of a mess, I think. They have they had a couple years of a of a window where they could have won the division and made that jump, but they just really haven't put it all together. Whether it's their injuries or poor drafting or bad management, I think I think I personally think he's an A, but I think he's going to have a B plus season. It's not going to be as stellar as everybody had hoped just because of, of the uh, entanglements, we'll say, within the organization. Yeah, I definitely have Deshaun as an A. Um, I think he'll stay an A and probably stay an A if he stays in Houston for his whole career. Houston, to me, that franchise has a lot of questions around their management, in my opinion. They make a lot of questionable decisions. Um, but Deshaun Watson's a special talent for sure. Um, I think getting into that, in my opinion, that A plus, that top tier category is really hard to do. Uh, so it's not a shot at, I'm taking at him for saying that he won't get there. Um, I probably don't, I don't know if, I don't even know if I, if I really believe Lamar Jackson will get there. That's how elite. I put it up the as as uh, that A plus top tier category. I, I think what ha- but what helps Deshaun Watson too is that his division is pretty weak. 
Yeah. Yes. Like, um, I, I know what you're saying about him losing some weapons, but the other teams in his division have yeah. lost weapons as well. That's, that's a fair point. Um, and like two of them are in quarterback limbo right now. So, I yeah, I, I still see him having a good year this year, especially yeah. in his division. Yeah, they're going to over, he's going to have to for them to yeah. uh, do well, right? He's like to really excel, to win that division. So yeah. I think he's going to actually look good, but. Well, I hope I hope I'm wrong. I hope he's a I hope he's a monster. I like him as a quarterback. Yeah. Okay, we got Deshaun Watson as an A. Indianapolis. Um, I'll go first. Uh, I know Philip Rivers is there, but Jacoby, I I still think he's in the mix for the starting job. I'm not a huge Rivers fan. I got him at a C plus. Um, he's older, not as mobile. Um. Again, it's also transitioning from a new to a new team after being so long in San Diego, Sasha LA. I think that's going to be a major change for him too. And that's going to be a very mental battle. So I, th- I think I got him a C plus. I got Jacoby at a B. I think he got a raw deal last year. Um, nothing, nothing against Andrew Luck. I mean, that's his decision. He's, and, you know, he's taking it the right way. You can take care of his body and mind and all that stuff. But um, Jacoby just had, was just kind of like, oh, hey, Starting, which it, 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 it is a big shift. And I don't think he did that poorly. Um, so I got him at a B and Philip Rivers as a C plus. Drew? Yeah, uh, yeah I've, I've got them as a package deal, Rivers and Brissett at C plus. Um, I like Brissett more, but I think Rivers, just based on reputation, is going to get the first look yeah. uh, for the season. But I think by the end of the year, we're going to see Brissett step in there, who – I believe has the potential to be a B, uh, especially with the situation that he's in there. Yeah, uh, I like Indy's roster. Um, they got a great old line, and it's young. And they got uh, they got a few weapons there. They got an uh, up and coming defense as well. And yeah, I'm mean, that that's a good situation. Yeah. Um, I could see them looking uh, to trade up maybe next year to try Ooh. and to try and get into that Trevor Lawrence category. If they can, if they can swing that somehow next year, uh, I, like I could see the Colts being a dangerous team for the next 10 years. What do you think, Dan? As long as uh, their, their number one quarterback doesn't retire early uh, and unexpectedly, they'll be okay. Um, uh, if, if they sell it, Andrew Luck, I this think be they'd unreal. be a, Right? That'd be, it would be unreal. Changes the division, right? But oh, yeah. absolutely um, changes the I, league. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I have always been a Philip Rivers fan. I've always felt sorry for him, uh, but I loved his toughness, um, and he's always been consistent. And uh, uh, I don't see Philip Rivers losing that starting job from day one. I could, I think you're, you could be onto something that he could lose it at some point. Um, but it just seems to me that the the Colts don't believe in Brissett. And uh, Philip Rivers, they're gonna gonna give him a go and see how he does and see if he can uh, re- rejuvenate himself a little bit. And I think it's gonna be a failure, and it's probably better just going with Brissett the whole way. So I'm just I'm giving them a tag team score of a B. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna yeah, give a little bit of benefit of doubt to Philip Rivers there. And yeah, I think Brissett's right there too. So I'm not sold on either of them to be honest. Next up is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mark Poirier. Sup? All right. So this is my only quarterback in this category of D plus uh, for Gardner Minshew. Uh, I am not a believer in this Minshew magic, whatever. Madness, it's Minshew Madness, I think. Mad, whatever it is. Uh, I think they said Minshew Magic, too, and, and then it switched to Madness because he couldn't even hold up the, the nickname of, of Fitz Magic. So that's how he, he got downgraded in his nickname. Yeah. <laughs> so, D plus. Yeah, I I, I'm not a believer in the Jaguars at all. I don't know what they're trying to do there. Uh, I don't know why you trade away Jalen Ramsey, like – yeah, the best corner in the game at 24 years old. Like, 
It doesn't make sense. That just makes no just sense to me at all. Crazy. Um, Le- Leonard Fournette seems like he's hot and cold, like motivated to play football. Like, I don't know what he's doing either. Uh, I don't yeah. trust their weapons. Um, yeah, I, I don't see this being a good year for Gardner Minshew. Uh, 100% agree. I got him at a D. I didn't even give him the plus. Like, sure, he had a nice little run in the games, but, you know, I think NFL defense has figured him out pretty quick. Hmm. I think this is the kind of team in Madden that you just blow up and just start signing guys and drift, draft picks and stuff like that. This is the kind of team you're like, I'm going to turn this franchise around, blah, 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 as a user and, and whatever. I, there's just nothing really positive going on here. And, yeah, I don't think he's, he's the answer. Let's put it that way. And uh, I think uh, I agree with a lot of your other points, too, that Jacksonville really has – it just seems like their owner wants to make money. That's why he had a couple games in London every year. He's, you know, just, just – because he's going to make more money at the gate receipts there than he was at home. So is, is that the, the best owner, way to run a football team? Is the, owner, is the owner of Jacksonville also a part owner of some English Premier League team? I think so, yeah. I'm not sure which one, but I think he owns part of a team. Last name is Khan. Um, Bobby Khan. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think I don't think this is the answer. Uh, I I feel bad for the fans in Jacksonville, but um, another another tough year coming up for you boys. Here, yeah. here's a prediction. They'll be they'll be asking for Blake Bortles back by the end of the year. <laughs> Wow. Oh man. You know, you're desperate when, um, you look at, you look at the state of Florida right now and how big of a mess they're in and how no one cares, uh, about staying home and, and stopping the spread. Um, look at, it's the perfect relation to the Jacksonville Jaguars. They are a mess. You guys have hit all the right notes. And I also give Mr. Minshew a D. All right. I'll agree with you guys. Like I thought D plus was low enough, but I'll just feel kind of bad. Follow right? you guys. I'll <laughs> follow you guys all the way down. How, <laughs> however low you want to go, I'll I'll go. <laughs> Mark Poirier. Good luck. Good luck this year, my friend. Good luck. Hit us up all on right. Instagram with your reply there, Mark. All <laughs> right. We'll hit up the Tennessee Titans. This one, oh man. Like as a quarterback, I got to give him a C. What? Like, what? Yes. Come on. Come on. He, How many uh, yards did he throw in the preseason, in the, in the postseason? He's a good game manager. Uh, I'll give him that. But he's not going to win you any game. quarterback is. Most of them. Oh, no, 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 no. Guys in the top tiers will steal you a game. He can I'm steal you a game. No, Derrick Henry will steal me a game. The defense will steal me a game. Tannehill, no, nah, I'm not buying mm. it. I'm not buying it mm. at all. Not buying it. No mm. way. Not even a plus. Me. I, oh, uh, yeah, I, I like Ryan Tannehill, and I think he's been disrespected his whole career. I will. Uh, <laughs> what he did in Miami, like he was good in Miami. Was I don't know why they were upset with what he was giving them. They literally uh, I have them nothing a, in Miami. <laughs> yeah, I know. There. I have Ryan Tannehill as a B plus. Like I, I think he's a good quarterback and I think uh, what the Titans have in a weaker division, I think they'll, I'll think they'll give the, the Texans a run for, for top seed in, in the AFC South. And I think, I think, Tannehill will be a big part of that. Yeah, I yeah, I'm definitely leaning more towards you, Drew. Uh, not all the way though. Um, I think they definitely will give the Texans a run. Um, their the rest would? of their team is really solid. Part, pardon, Coach. Who else would in that division? There has to be somebody to give the top team a run. No, I give the Colts too. Like, hmm. anyways. anyways come on. So come on. I'm gonna go. I'm giving Tannehill a B. I think he's a good game manager, a reliable game manager. Um, he's not going to make too many mistakes and he, at least his coach can trust him to throw the ball. 
I'm not going to point out at any other teams like, I don't know, one that made the Super Bowl. Um, wow. Uh, oh, the 49 is there, but, but, okay, you're making me so, I'm not, like, like, if your coach can't trust you to throw the ball, like, like, come on, come on. But anyways, Tannehill, I, like, they gave him a deal for a reason, right? And I, I would probably give him a B plus if he had, like, a total full year of, of what he did. Um, but because he had to go in and, and take over for Mariota, uh, a full year this year will probably move him into a B plus for me. So I guess that's what it is. For this year, he's going to be a B-plus quarterback. Yes. Okay. I'm with All you. Right. I'm with you, Drew. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm up. AFC West, boys. The <laughs> Denver Broncos. I think we all had to remind ourselves who was the starting quarterback. So uh, who's, who's kicking it off? I got him. Uh, I just downgraded him to a D. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Uh, yeah. Really? I don't I'm not really a believer in what what the Broncos are doing altogether. Like I I really can't name you any of their guys on their offense. Like so it makes it hard to pick a guy, but yeah, <laughs> D. Uh, I'll I'll hear your explanations first. I guess I should have let you guys go first, but No, I'm I'm with you. Yeah. Drew Locke, please. <laughs> honestly, I, I honestly like. I know he he is, you know, he only had a couple games last year. I think it was five, but it doesn't instill confidence in me when I saw when I watched the few games that I did watch. I managed to catch a Broncos game on TV, and I was just like, "Who is this guy? Doesn't look great." And then you add in the fact that Denver is their team is just up in the air. Like, I feel bad, like, for Vaughn Miller, really. Because, like, just wasting his, his time, really. But um, could it be a bounce back year for Drew Locke? Could we see him move into the CC plus territory? Possibly. But uh, I don't think he's getting – I don't think he's moving out of this D in my heart. Ah, oh, man, you guys, are kind of, you guys are kind of rough on Drew Locke here. You know what his record was last year out of the, his last five games? It was four and one. Four and one. Okay, 64% but who did, who percentage. did they play? Uh, good question. I don't have it on I don't have it on me here. His quarterback uh, rating was 89.7, bro. That's I know. Great. But to give him a D, like I, I don't know. I, I don't think he's a D. Um <laughs> uh, I think uh, we can do I would give him a C. I'm giving Drew Lock a C, and he's yeah. gonna have no, no. Christian, you can give him a D plus if you want. No, I'm going to give him a C. He's going to finish this year as a C plus this year. I think Drew Locke, he's a kind of a prototypical size. You know, he's not um, – he's got some uh, mobility. Uh, he's got a good completion percentage too. I think that's one of the most important things. I'm going to give him a C plus. That's cute. Okay, I'm next up. Who we got next here? Chiefs. The Chiefs. This one is really the easy. easiest. A plus. Enough said. A you know? plus. A plus plus plus. If I could give more than one plus. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes could be one of the greatest talents we've ever seen. The only the only real question for him coming up this this year, there's two. Will he win another MVP? And will he win another Super Bowl? That's it. This year? <laughs> Yeah, this year. This year, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, this year. That's that's yeah. the question. You know what who I mean? Knows, like, who knows this year? Drew has him not winning a Super Bowl the whole ne- next few while, but um, it won't uh, happen. His his contract is actually very team friendly. I went over that. We won't get into it again. But anyways, okay. A plus for all ingredients, and like this tier is just top of the line. I think. Yeah, uh, I just want to. What the name of this tier? There's going to be only two in there <laughs> All together, well, yeah. by the time we're done. Yeah. Okay. Next team up. Oakland. No, the Las, Las Vegas. Vegas Raiders. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All ah. right. Who's first? <laughs> I'll go first since I mumbled it. Um, I'm actually – this was this will surprise you guys. I'm a big car fan. I think – 
he has been super underrated. Yes. He, I just, I just, I, th- I think he's a great quarterback. He just gets, he gets, you know, a lot of a flack for no reason, but um, he has done wonders with that team. I gave him, I gave him a B plus. I really like Drew Carr a lot. Derek Carr. Derek, Derek Carr. Oh. Guys, I hate doing football. I hate doing football. <laughs> pick, pick my TikTok dance right now. I love it. All right, I'm I'm with you though, Joel. Uh, Derek Carr. I gave him a B. I really like him. I think he's been underrated, undervalued. Uh, I don't know why people were picking at him. I don't know. Uh, the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, I think he's good. I think he's got a few weapons there. He's got that tight end there that he likes throwing to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think uh, with Jacobs there uh, running the ball, he'll have opportunities in the play action. And Was Jacobs a rookie last year? Yeah. Uh, yeah he's Josh good. Had. He's really he's good. Real, he's real good. Yeah. Uh, like so it. yeah, I think they're. I think they're going to be. I think they'll be a good team. I think they'll be the second best team in this division. Uh, yeah. The Raiders. So. Not. Not. That's not saying a whole lot, but. That's no. where I think they'll, they'll end up. Yeah. They'll be a top out in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I'm probably with you guys as well. Um, Derek Carr, I I love John Gruden, and I love what he's doing. Everyone kind of questioned his uh, trading away of uh, Khalil Mack and and all these moves that he's made, but now they're set up. They're set up for the next little while. Um, unfortunately, they got uh, they got the. I don't know the the bad end of the stick with Antonio Brown. I think if they had Antonio Brown last year, how good would they have been? Um, if you know, just football wise, into the stick, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, Derek Carr at the end of this year, I'm giving him a B plus. B plus. I like Derek Carr. I think he's good. Lastly, okay. we got the team that has lots of experience with not many fans in the stands already is the Chargers. All right. Well. I got uh, Herbert and Taylor. I got them as a C uh, collectively. I think Taylor's actually a solid, solid professional NFL quarterback. Um, and they've got weapons there to use. Yeah. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just not sold completely. And I, I don't really know what their plan is. Uh, going forward i think their plan is to start with taylor hey like yeah. give him the first chance um i think he's solid i think c's not a terrible grade when you're talking about these quarterbacks so i think that's fair c like taylor could probably be a c plus but together i'll give them a c yeah i'll agree with you on that i gave i gave tyroud a c plus and justin a c um I it, draft day was weird. It was really weird that they picked up a quarterback, um, but they they must have had him pretty high on their draft board to jump in on like that. So I feel like this could be another situation where where Tyrod might start, and then a couple games in, maybe six, if they're not doing so great, they jump in with Justin if he shows them enough during camps and stuff like that. But um, I, I, I like I like Tyrod Taylor as a quarterback too. He's he's done you know some some good things uh, in his career, and this could also be just a chance for him to just blow things up and show his full range of skills. I, I, I'm giving him a C plus now. I don't think he's going to make that big of a jump throughout the year, personally as of right now. So I, I think he's going to stay C plus, but he does I think he does have the chance to get into that B B plus range. Yeah, like Tyrod's a tough one for me. Like he'll he'll be thirty one by the time the season starts. You don't really see much upside. You know what you're gonna get with him, and I think that's yeah. a C quarterback. I don't even have him as a C plus. I think he's a solid C um, game manager. I don't even know if he's a good game manager. You know, he's kind of on the bubble for me. 
But I think there's lots of upside with uh, with Hair Bear, and yeah, it depends depends if he even gets time this year. Um, yeah. It's it's really tough to say. Uh, I would still rank Hair Bear as a C plus, and I think by the end of his career he'll be a full letter grade up because uh, I think he's a good uh, good talent and, and well, he's got that. Go ahead. At the, well, at the beginning of last season, I think he was projected to go as the first quarterback in this draft. Oh, really? Yeah, and I think he just dropped in this past year because of, you know, Joe Burrow had that great great year in Tua. I think it was him and Tua were up there, though, on yeah. most people's draft boards at the beginning of last season. Yeah. 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 So there's got to be something there. And he's going to have that chip on his shoulder from that, too, right? I I love yeah. it when guys have those chips on their shoulders. So Well, I think I think I could be wrong on this too. So I'm not saying this for sure, but I think what Scout said if he would have came out the year before, oh, Herbert yeah. would have been the number 1 quarterback. Wow. Is this the, the guy before. who transferred out? Um He's from um, Oregon. Oh, okay, I'm thinking something different then. All right, boys, that is it for our quarterbacks. Um, let us know what you guys think about some of our picks. We're going to get to the NFC next week. But let's hear another word from our sponsors. With no sports to watch on TV, eSports have been shooting off the charts. What are eSports, you may ask? Well, basically, it's competitive video gaming. eSports are fun to watch, and my favorite gamer to watch is a guy named Vandalize. Vandalize plays a variety of consoles and games, including the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. What makes him so unique is that he plays these games with the controller upside down. It is a talent unlike any other. You can check his Twitch stream out, and you can find the link in the Sports Reverence Instagram bio, or you can search him up on Twitch, Vandalized, with two Zs or Zs. His control will be upside down. All right, we're back for the Sports Reverence Podcast. And sports are on its way. I'm so excited. So I had the question for the boys. What sports are you most excited for? Which sport are you most excited for for the return? Okay, that's an easy one for me. I'm, I'm so pumped that basketball is coming back. Like beyond, beyond happy. Um, especially because we get eight games and then a playoffs, that it's it's unreal. Uh, I am pumped though for the Yankees opening day game. I think it's going to be a great game. But uh, overall, I am super stoked for the return of the basketball. And and I've been hearing a lot of chatter that the Raps may take the East, and that's making me feel really happy. Charles mm-hmm. Barkley called them. Yeah, tr- Sir Charles. <laughs> Charles Barkley. Um, I'm I'm excited. Well, I'm excited for all sports to be back, but I'm excited yes. to see how the MLB season with 60 games, uh, the urgency in baseball that it sort yeah. of lacks over 162 games. Yeah, uh, it's sort of going to feel like. Uh, postseason late, all the way through. like September baseball yeah. uh, right away and I'm excited for that and I'm excited to see these teams who are young up and coming teams have a chance to get off to a hot start and really shock the baseball world so I'm excited for that I'm also excited to see if the Leafs can do something but not not getting my hopes up Dan, what do you see- think? Drew, did you see the Mets play, um, I think it was the Yankees, uh, either yesterday or the day ago? Um, they, they put the cardboard cutouts of the fans, of the season ticket holders. You can send in your picture, and they put oh, it on crazy. a cardboard cutout and put it in your seat. And wow. uh, I thought that's pretty <laughs> legendary. So I thought that was awesome. Um, well, I guess you're paying that much for season tickets. You need some value added, eh? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and uh, apparently you can pay – to if 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 you want to pay for a, a cardboard cutout being on TV, you can pay for that too. So, um, but when if they would send them to you? <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. That would yeah. be it would be okay. Um, I'd rather have one of like my favorite player, but 
not myself, but uh, <laughs> you know those you remember those big sticky vinyls of players? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The fat heads. Fat yeah. heads, yes, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Um so yeah, you guys already know what I'm I'm definitely most excited for the National Basketball Association. Uh preseason games. I got it marked on my calendar. It starts on Wednesday. Like I'm excited. Um I have NBA League Pass, so I can literally watch everything. And um, um, so I'm stoked for that. But, yes, I'm excited for all the sports. Baseball is going to be fun. Um, But hockey and basketball, for sure, is on my mind the most because it's just jumping right into the playoffs pretty much. Um, Yeah, I guess guess the point of of it's almost like September baseball right away from the start. But – I'm I'm going with hockey and basketball as my most excited thing because they're jumping right into the playoffs. They've already had enough of a season for me to say that they've achieved enough for the playoffs. So I think that's going to be fun to see how that that turns out. Uh, which brought up the other question, okay? Um, out of the four sports we're talking about, hockey, basketball, football, soccer, American football, Joel, um, the one that plays in the United States, that's not the MLS, um, uh, which four of these sports will actually finish a season? Oh, or will they all finish? Whatever you guys think. Um, I think NBA and NHL will finish, especially seeing the positive COVID numbers from the testing. Um, so those are, those are really good numbers overall. So it kind of shows that the bubble idea is working. I think the, the greatest – the league with the greatest possibility of having the season canceled will be baseball because there has already been so many question marks for baseball players who want to play, but are afraid of COVID. Uh, there's been a lot of dissension between owners and, and the PA. I, that, let's be honest, a couple of weeks ago, we thought that baseball might be canceled. Rob Manfred was like, ah, they might play. We might not play. Right. So in my estimation i think the nfl is too much money to lose if they don't finish so they'll find a way to make sure that everybody's healthy they're hoping in a bank on the colder weather to to tone things down but i think the major league baseball has the highest chance of not finishing that answer the question which ones will finish and which ones won't i did you did no you're saying mlb has the chance nfl doesn't have a choice because they have all the money NBA and NHL have proven because of COVID numbers that they can do it, and MLB won't. Okay, thank clear you. Clear enough for you? Drew yes. gets it. Drew has been reading me right all day today. All day. All I got to say. I'm with you. Thank you. I'm, I'm with you with this, too, because My man. I think baseball definitely has the highest chance not to, not to end, uh, especially with – if Mike Trout doesn't play, they might as well just cancel the season. <laughs> like, Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because he's the most exciting player to watch. Um, I think NHL has the highest chance uh, to succeed just because of the bubble cities being yeah. where they are. I think uh, I think that's good. Uh, NBA, I've been, you know, I've been back and forth on NBA because it, it seems like some of their key players are sort of questioning whether they're going to go or not. But it also seems to be players on teams that have no chance of winning anyways. They're pretty so, much all in the bubble now right. in the NBA. Yeah. If, if LeBron so, says they're yeah. going, they're going. That's pretty much how it goes. Yeah. LeBron's so annoying. Yes. Um, but yeah, NBA, NHL, NFL, I think we'll all finish. MLB, question mark. Hope it will. But if Mike Trout doesn't play, just cancel it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, like mathematically, NFL would be the ones that is the biggest chance of it not finishing because there's just more people and more to deal with, right? Um, And right now, there's a lot of talk with NFL. Like Mahomes has come out and said, Wilson has come out and said, um, and many other players have said that there's no uh, guidelines that have been put out. I want my families to be safe. Uh, Russell Wilson said, my wife is pregnant, and that's my number one priority of keeping my family safe. Um, Talk is cheap. Uh, so right now, NFL is under a lot of scrutiny now, too. But at the end of the day, Joel alluded to it first, money talks, and that's what's going to run. All of them, in my opinion, will go, and they will finish. They may pause in the middle of it, maybe for baseball and 
and NFL because of the travel and that could cause some issues. But you know what? Even baseball guys, like the, the protocols they have for their teams, for example, the proposal the Blue Jays had for uh, teams coming from the States to Canada and what the Blue Jays had to do for their situation was Crazy. so strict. They had to stay in their hotel and could only go out to the Rogers Center. And if they had a team outing, it would be all like pre-planned and, and it's basically a moving bottle, bubble. Um, but that's just, uh, I, I think these teams are going to really focus on, on player safety, all this kind of stuff. All of it's going to finish and it's going to be an epic year. All right. And on that note, guys, I think the rest of this 2020 year is going to be turning for an upswing. Um, I really hope that people um, will start experiencing that and start feeling that and feeling some hope. Hopefully there'll be some news of a vaccine, even though if it might not even come out this year, maybe it'll start the process um, of however it happens. But I really believe 2020 is going to be up for uh, the second half, or I guess a little past the second half of 2020 is going to be good. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm trying to stay hopeful and uh, share a little hope with everyone. Well, guys, what, do you, what are some hopeful thoughts you guys have for the rest of 2020? Uh, what's something that can uh, give a piece of hope to someone? Yeah, that's easy. I mean, we were seeing a lot of uh, big increase in COVID cases, but the deaths have been really flattened. And that's a good sign that... Um, we're moving in the right direction. So just keep wearing your masks, social distance when you can, but uh, don't forget to enjoy your life because you can't live in fear. Just be smart about it. Yeah, I think the encouraging thing for me has been seeing communities yeah. come together to help each other. And, and even in the church communities, like different churches coming together because some churches don't have the resources to, to do everything at this time. Um, we're, we're collaborating with another church right now to do a, a little day camp, uh, yeah. just a one day outdoor, play some games with some pool noodles. So six foot pool noodles. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, we're planning to play a big game of capture the flag, but instead of tagging each other, you smack them with a pool noodle. So that sounds really be fun. fun. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I will say one more thing. One more thing. I think one of the one of the outcomes of COVID that's been really positive is um, the explosion of online services. And for me personally, I've been able to see Dan preach way more than I ever had before. And that's something that's really cool. And there's been uh, something that I've taken to heart and enjoyed a lot. So that's one of the positives that I've taken away. Yeah. How many times have you watched me preach? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you live twice, though. So that's yeah. pretty good for me. Um, I was I was just gonna say it was pretty cool even before COVID happened and and any of that happened. It was uh, an anonymous donor came in and 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 blessed our church with a uh, a financial. He said he said there may be a. It's kind of weird. He said there may be like a financial crisis upcoming, so you can use this as a security blanket. And uh, uh, he he came and made a, a big a, a sizable donation um to our church which is uh is about a quarter of our years our, our church's yearly income that that was donated in one op, in one 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 giving so uh that was really cool to see how that has carried us through and wow. and uh you know it's always been i i just want to tell people stay hopeful you know it's good good things are on its way and uh we'll, we're gonna keep learning through this tough stormy season that's uh there's lots of lessons to be learned so I love the encouragement, boys. Let's, uh, we're, I'm pumped for the Thursday pod because there's already going to be preseason sports that have been played. And uh, we get to see the Blue Jays play tomorrow, um, finally against a different team instead of their, uh, against playing themselves. So that's going to be fun. And uh, guys, I hope you're stoked. Let's have a good uh, – uh, make sure – why don't you guys tell us about the website first and the social medias. Yeah, check us out on the website. Lots of good things being posted on there. I think a new Raptors report has been posted as well. Yep, Check yep. That out. Give that a read. Um, and also just, you know, fill out the polls. We'd love to see what our fans are thinking. And, you know, if, you, if you're contrarian to us, great. If you agree with us, great. Let's, uh, let's hear what you guys got to say. Yeah, those polls got to be done by July 23rd. All of them. Because that's yeah. the start of the MLB season. So that's the contest to see if you can beat the sports reference. 
And check us out on our social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Give us a like, follow, subscribe, whatever. Um, yeah, and tell Dan why he's wrong, why the Raptors shouldn't sign Serge Ibaka again. <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys on Thursday. Peace out, world. Peace. Peace.